So we left off where we formulated the new maximization problem that corresponded to the original minimization problem. So I've already converted to a table because this is a skill that we've used before. So just remember that every constraint requires a slack variable. So the first constraint got the S1, as you can see. First row was one, two, followed by a one. Rest of the zeros and then two and so on. So we have the first three rows being the constraints. Last year, remember, we convert it to the negatives x1 and x2 because those negative indicators tell us that we have more work to do as far as maximizing z. So this is our initial setup. So looking at this, remember what we do to initiate the first step. We go for the column that has the most negative entry in the bottom row, and that's x1, which means we're going to try to bring in as much x1 as we can. So, and we figure that out by computing ratios. Now, beautiful thing is we're dividing the right-hand side by one, no matter what. So it's basically a matter of picking the number that is the lowest, and that's over here, that's one. So that means that's my pivot. So using that idea, it looks like I'm going to take opposite of R2 plus R1 to end up with R1. I'm gonna take the opposite of R2 and add it to R3 to get a new R3, and I'm gonna take 100 R2 and add it to R4 to make a new R4. So I encourage you to pause the video, work out the row operations on your own, and then when you're all done, come back. So do that now if you want to. And then once you're done with all of that, this should be your new tableau. And you notice this solution is optimal because there's no negative entry in the bottom row. So this is good news. But now the question is, how do we read this? And more importantly, how do we get back to the minimization problem? It's actually kind of interesting how it all works out. So the solution to the maximization problem, well, same, we're gonna read it the same way as before. X1 is a basic variable because it has all zeros except one. We'll say X1 is one. We'll say X2 is non-basic, so its value is zero. We'll say S1 is one. S2 is 0, S3 is 2, and Z is 100. Well, this is good news because now what we know is that the maximum value of Z is the minimum value of W in the dual problem. So that means that the minimum value of W is 100. But now, what are the values of y1, y2, and y3 that cause it? As it turns out, and for this table, it works out well, but as long as your basic variables all have coefficients of 1, which they do, we read the values of y1, y2, and y3 from this row right here. So it's actually the slack variable columns in the bottom row. So y1 corresponds to s1, so that's going to be 0. y2 corresponds to s2, which means that's going to be 100. And y3 corresponds to s3, which corresponds to 0. If you think about it, it makes sense. When we transpose the matrix, every variable that we had became a constraint. The number of variables became the number of constraints. So that in turn means we have that's the same as the number of slack variables. So those are always going to be the same. So it kind of stands to reason that there is some kind of link between the two. It just so happens to work out that way. So that is how we read a simplex table for a minimization problem. Don't worry, we're going to have some more examples and some more interesting ones where the numbers work out a little bit more nicely or more, um, you know, we're going to not have to have ones all the time. So we'll deal with that as we get there. So Hope that was a good first example for you, and I thank you for watching.